Gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. Help us to hear you and to see you today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, if you were here, you will remember that we talked about the Good Samaritan. And the Good Samaritan, to our knowledge, was not sent to that man who was lying beaten beside the road. But as he came upon him, he responded to him. This Samaritan was out of his typical geographic area. He was really out of bounds from a social standpoint in responding to this man. And he went way beyond what we would normally think of as help when he took this man to an inn, gave him to the innkeeper and said, here's what I'll pay you now and whatever other charges he incurs while he is here getting better, I will pay you for those as well. And so this good Samaritan, just apparently upon his own volition, decided to do this for this man. Today we start talking about being sent. We continue in our series that we started last week about being sent. And in this passage that Nate has read for us, we hear of Jesus appointing 72 to go out. Now we are reading out of chapter number 10. If you think back to chapter number 9, at the very end of that chapter we read that Jesus came to the awareness it was time to go to Jerusalem. It was time to go and face what he knew would happen there. And so we read that he had set his face toward Jerusalem. He knows now where he's going. And though we don't have the exact route, we don't know exactly what villages or towns that Jesus may be going through, he does. And so he appoints 72 to go to those villages ahead of him to prepare the way. We don't know anything about these 72. We don't know if at some point earlier he had asked for volunteers among those who were with him. We don't know if he simply selected them, if he had a gathering, maybe something like this, and simply began to point at people saying, you will go, you will go, you will go. We don't know how he did that. Some translations use the number 70 instead of 72, but whatever the case, we know that there was about that many people that Jesus appointed to go. To go into these villages and to share good news with them. He told them to heal. He told them to tell them that the kingdom of God is near you. And that was good news. They were appointed to do this, to go out and, in a sense, prepare the way of the Lord. That may, may, may make you think about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was sent, was he not? And he was sent so that he might prepare a way for the Lord. And so now Jesus is sending 72 others into these villages so that he might receive a welcome there. Or would he receive a welcome there? He gives these 72 that he is sending some fairly unusual instructions We've heard Teresa already talk about being told to take nothing with you. Now, I don't know about you, but just leaving the house in the morning, you got to take stuff with you, do you not? You put stuff in your pockets. You put stuff in your purses. Perhaps you carry a backpack. You take stuff with you. And that's just to get through a normal day. That's not even going somewhere away from your town, going away for who knows how long. It may have been a pretty good journey to get to some of these villages that Jesus is sending these folks. And he says, don't take anything with you. We're a kind of a nation of taking stuff with us. We don't function very well if we can't have stuff with us. I've shared with you that our daughter is expecting her first in October and they're talking about buying a minivan. Right? Because if you have kids, you have to have a minivan because you have all this stuff that you got to take with you. They're already talking about doing that. We kid her sometimes about the small suitcase size of the purses that she carries. Our daughter 
would not have responded to this very well, probably, to be told not to take anything extra with her. I don't know if she could function that way. But that's what Jesus tells these guys. Don't take anything extra with you. But go and share the good news. Go and heal the people. Go and tell them that I'm on my way. I'm coming. Go and prepare the way for me. And so they do that. There are three things that we can note out of this passage from Luke's Gospel. We can note, first of all, that it's not just Jesus' inner circle. It's not just the twelve that he has chosen that he asks to do something. Sometimes we might think about the fact that, well, you know, Jesus chose those twelve that are really close to him. They're with him all the time. If he needs something done, he picks somebody from among that group and sends them out. We find in this passage that is not always the case. That number 12 that we might think are Jesus' close disciples who do things for him has now become a much bigger circle of 72 that Jesus is sending out. It's not just the inner circle that Jesus expects to do things. It's anybody who claims to follow him. We sometimes fall into that trap of thinking, well, there's somebody who will take care of that. There's somebody who will do that. Somebody is called into that kind of ministry, so I'll just let them take care of it. And yet, we read in this passage that Jesus sent out these 72 other nameless people to do something very important for him. Jesus sends us all. We're all sent in some way to do what Jesus wants done. We don't know where we might be sent. We don't know what we might be asked to do. We, we don't know who the other people there might be. Those 72 didn't know that. They may have been going to some place they'd never even heard of before, much less have been there, and yet they went. And so we need to take note of the fact that it's not just the inner circle, those 12 specially called who are sent to do things. We're all called to do that. We also recognize in this passage that we are not to depend upon our own resources in carrying out what God wants us to do. Jesus tells these guys, don't take anything extra with you. Don't take extra clothes or extra shoes. Don't even take a purse that might have money in it. All of that stuff, you'll be provided you don't need to worry about that extra stuff. That will be provided for you because you are doing my work. And that will be provided. You will find people who will give you lodging. You will find people who will give you food. If you need an extra set of clothes, you'll find people who will give that to you as well. Because you are doing my work. We are often so dependent upon our own resources we think, well, I have to have something to offer that I know about or I can't do something. And yet we need to remember that we will be provided with whatever is needed to accomplish something that God sends us to do. We sometimes limit our own activity by thinking, well, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I've never done that before. Well, that's only depending upon our own resources. We don't know what God might give to us as we carry out what God wants us to do. Perhaps God will make us aware of a gift that we never even realized we had. Or perhaps God will give us something that's needed in order to accomplish God's work. We so want to depend upon our own resources, whether they are material resources or inner resources, and yet what we read here is, don't worry about any of that. God will give you what you need as you carry out God's work. And so these 72 are sent out. We also hear something about their mission. They are supposed to heal, they are supposed to spread the good news, and they are supposed to tell the people the kingdom of God is near. 
Now that's what they're supposed to do. But Jesus warns them that they may not always be able to do all that Jesus wants them to do. If you remember all the way back to the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry, back in the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus was in the synagogue with people that he had grown up with, people who had known him since he was born. And he was sharing with them. And those people didn't like what Jesus was saying. And so what did they attempt to do? They attempted to throw him off the cliff. These are the people who had known him since he was a little boy. But because they didn't like what he was saying, let's throw him off the cliff. Jesus knows from personal experience that not every town into which these people are being sent are going to be receptive to the words they have. Jesus knows what it's like to be rejected. And so he's trying to warn these guys, they may not like what you have to say. They may not like what you're doing. They may not want you in their town. And if that's the case, wipe the dust from that town off of your feet and move on. But whatever your reception is, tell them the kingdom of God is near. Regardless of whether or not they want to hear you, tell them the kingdom of God is near. That was their objective. When these 72 returned, Jesus didn't take out his scorecard and say, okay, guys, I want numbers here. He simply wanted them to convey that message. The kingdom of God is near. That's the goal of those 72. They were excited about what they had done. They came back and shared that with Jesus. And he said, you know, the really important thing is not that the demons submitted to you. The important thing is that you were doing what God wanted you to do. That's the important part. We are the 72. We are the 72. Thankfully, spreading the news about the kingdom did not stop with that 72, but was carried on by others, and then by others, and then by others, and then by others. And thankfully, people have continued spreading that good news so that we heard it somewhere along the line 2,000 years later. And so our task is to continue to spread that news, continue to talk about the kingdom, because we are part of that 72. We are the part that is sent out to share this news with others. We read in the letter to the Galatians, let us not grow weary of doing good, for at a proper time we will reap a harvest that will last. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for at a proper time we will reap a harvest. We are sent out. And we also hear Jesus say that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is out there. We are sent out as part of that continuing group of 72 to share the good news with others, that they might hear about the kingdom of God. We are sent out to spread that kingdom throughout the world that others will come to know that God loves us, each one of us, enough to die for us. That's spreading the kingdom so that others can hear. May we continue to be a part of that 72 so that that message continues to be heard. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you send us out. We thank you that you call us, that you appoint us, that you choose us to be the ones who will go and spread your kingdom. Continue to do that. Give us the courage to go out 
as lambs among wolves. Give us the confidence to go out knowing that we can depend upon you for resources, not just upon ourselves. Help us to go out and spread your kingdom that all may come to know of your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.